three-day event brings together some of the best in the world in jumping and in dressage. And today we'll be bringing you this, the third leg of the World Cup dressage qualifiers in the Western European League. The FEI World Cup is the most prestigious individual competition on the international dressage calendar, a truly global series that started in 1985 and that covers four leagues across the world, including the Pacific, North American, Central European and this, the Western European League. The best nine athlete and horse combinations from the Western European League will qualify for the final, which is being held in Leipzig, Germany, in April next year. The riders will have nine chances of qualifying in eight countries over six months. Today, we have a fabulous lineup of 12 horse and rider combinations coming forward this afternoon for this short Grand Prix. And we will have a look at the start list in just a few moments' time. But I'm Natasha Baker and I am so excited to be watching with you this afternoon for this third leg of the Western European League. We will bringing, be bringing you all of the action here on Clip My Horse over the next five months. Next up is London International Horse Show at the new venue XL next month on the 16th and 17th of December. Then we move on to Mechlin on the 29th of December before we move on to Amsterdam, Neumünster, Gothenburg and Sotogenbosch next year. If you fancy having a taste of what it's like to be one of our fantastic judges, this is your opportunity. You can test your judging skills and compare your marks with our skilled panel of judges by taking part in Spectator Judging powered by SAP. So grab your phones and download the Spectator Judging app either on the App Store on your iPhone or on the Play Store on your Android and put your dressage knowledge to the test this afternoon. You can see today that we have the short Grand Prix. This has only been used for this World Cup qualifiers for the first time. It was trialled for a couple of years at London Olympia, but is now being rolled out to all of the nine Western European legs. You'll notice it's quite a short test, but it's packed full of really difficult challenges with steep half passes and tempi changes on the centre line. The test is two minutes shorter than that of the full Grand Prix. As I said, this is the first leg. Last month, we saw Catherine Defour take the win in front of a home crowd at the opening leg in Herning in Denmark with a whopping 87.115, riding the wonderful Utter Up Guards Cassidy. Close behind was Karina Casacruz and Helene Stancera with 86.395. And Dinya Van Lier and Hermes finished third with 84.360. That was in the freestyle. And last time out, Isabel Vert and Weigold OLD won the freestyle with 84.910 in Lyon. And Nana Skodberg Morales was second with 83.695%. In third, we had Frederick Vandres and Duke of Britain scoring 81.640. But this is the start list. You can see lots of Spanish contenders here. The first horse and rider combination into the arena coming in at 4.30 local time, 3.30 British time. We have Frederick Vondres, who I just said there was third last time out in Lyon. We have lots of top riders here. Helen Lana Hannenberg, Morgan Barbison there at the bottom, second last to go and last to go there. Beatrice Ferrer-Salet, who is a staple of the Spanish team. A couple of riders from the Netherlands, Denise Nickerman, and the lovely Tima Vestra. She has contended in her, all three of the World Cup legs so far. So she is sitting pretty high up in the leaderboard at the moment in the Western European League standings. So these riders looking to ride the short Grand Prix today to qualify for the freestyle tomorrow. 
The winner of the freestyle will pick up 20 points, 17 for, points for second, 15 points for third, and then the points on a rolling scale down the leaderboard. They are able to compete in other leagues to pick up some extra points also. So make yourselves comfortable. The first horse is coming around the arena now. As I said, we have five Spanish com competitors coming into the arena today. But first up is Jaliandro Ascendo Menez, a 34-year-old. He's 200th in the world ranking, and he is riding Focus, an 11-year-old Hanoverian. This is just their fourth international this year after having a busy start to the season. Together, Alejandro and Focus competed in the prestigious Al Shakab in Doha in February, where they finished 18th in the Grand Prix with 63.761 and fourth in the special 65.298. Then at the end of May, they finished 13th in the CDI three star in Jerez with 65.044 in the Grand Prix and fourth in the freestyle with 70.785, their personal best. So coming into the arena now for Spain, Alejandro Ascendo Mendez riding the 11-year-old Focus. This horse has a lovely natural uphill frame. Good ground cover in the extended trot there. This is what I mean about the steep half passes in this new short Grand Prix. Maintaining that uphill tendency in those half passes. Slightly better there, maybe to the left than the right, a little more supple to the left. Horses like humans have a favorite rein. Just fell a little flat into the PF transition. Want to keep that level of activity. And you could see there, just lost a little bit of the straightness as well in the transition back into the PF. The judge is sitting around five or six there for the transitions around a six, six and a half for the PF. Just losing the rhythm here in the walk. Maintaining the lovely frame throughout, but you just want to see a clearer four beat rhythm in the walk. And again, really interesting in this floor plan, picking up the canter lead and then a very, very tight turn there. And then onto the center line, ready for the half pass zigzag. Lost a bit of the throughness in that flying change. The engagement just wasn't quite there. So this half pass zigzag has a coefficient of two. Just lost the straightness a bit there just before the turn at C. So nine two time changes now across the diagonal. Yeah, good correct changes. Just a little bit flat, I think, that's gonna prevent him from getting much more than a seven.
and then the ones down the center line. Yeah, nice, just that second change was a little short behind. Maybe it was my angle, but uh, again, good changes just, oh, again, just lost the fluency there coming out of that canter pirouette. Nice transition into trot as they come down their final center line. Good steps of passage. Better transition this time into the PF. Keeping the activity nicely. Again, just lost a little bit of fluency in the transitions, but picking up some higher marks for the passage and the PF itself. As they come into their final halt, just a little step back there, but a great start for the first rider for Spain, Alejandro Asenio Menez and Focus. I hope you can see what I mean with it. It's a really, really short, very quick but very challenging test. It seems to go much quicker than just two minutes shorter than the normal Grand Prix. So in this short Grand Prix as well, we lose the collectives that are at the end of the test from the judges and just get an overall general impression that has a coefficient of two. So that encapsulates everything that the collectives normally have. So the paces of the horse, the accuracy, the suppleness, the impulsion and the rider. And here we have it, the first score, 64.947. Obviously into the lead there, marks from 62.237 at H and up to 68.947 at B. So next into the arena, it's another rider for Spain. It's Claudia Castillo Ruiz, a 38 year old that is ranked 130th and he's riding Ebono, a 12 year old Lusitano. This partnership are here hot off the back of their win last month. Also here in Madrid in the CDI four star, they finished second in the Grand Prix with just shy of 70%, but took the win in the freestyle with their new personal best of 74.975 in the freestyle. They also had a double win back in May in Jerez with 70.587 in the Grand Prix. This is their first year together at International Grand Prix. Had a heartbreaking time earlier this year though, when he had to withdraw from the Spanish team for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics because his other horse wasn't fit to compete. But here he is, Claudia Castillo Ruiz and Ebono for Spain. Just lost the connection there into the first halt. The balance just wasn't quite there, was it? Again, a very beautiful eye-catching horse. Our first Lusitano, we're going to be seeing a few of those in the arena today. Big ground covering extended trot. Nice and loose in the trot here. Again, really able to cover the ground there in the half passes. It's losing a bit of concentration. 
just affected the rhythm there as well in the changeover from the half pass left to the half pass right. Much better balance there into that halt. I'd like to have just seen it more immobilized. He went to correct and then straight away asked for the rain back, but nice clear steps in the rain back. Good activity in the PF. Good activity from the hind leg. This is such a short section of walk in this test. Both the extended walk and the collected walk are of double coefficient. So it can be very expensive if they have a mistake or have a, an, a, a difference in the rhythm. You can see here just a bit of tension creeping in in the walk. Some nice steps of the canter half pass. I think it could have been more supple, just lost a bit of the connection at times. Just I feel here at times the horse is just a little bit on the shoulder. I'd like to see it take a little bit more weight behind and really come up and be more open through the shoulder in the canter. Lovely correct changes. Oh, just lost the rhythm there towards the end of the canter pirouette. Good one times down the center line again. Nowhere to hide with those one time changes being on the center line. The judge at sea really able to see how straight you are. Lovely difference there in the extended canter. Extending the frame nicely, keeping the pole at the highest point. Just lost a bit of fluency in the transition into the trot. And see a bit of tension in the horse's mouth, just playing with the bit as he comes down into the final salute. There we have it for Claudio Castellaruiz and the lovely Ebono for Spain. What a lovely Lusitano! Such a happy little horse. I think we might have these guys going into the lead. Again, just 12 years old, this horse, so plenty of time to develop and come into his own. As I said, Claudio had a really heartbreaking time not making it to Tokyo, but also he missed out on London 2012 because his horse, Jade DMV, passed away shortly before the game. So he's had a 
a lot of bad luck, bless him. He did, however, make it to the Rio 2016 Olympics, where he finished 38th individually. A seasoned competitor, though, having taken part in two World Games and four European Championships. So here we go, 67.342 into the lead, scores there between 65 and 69%. And we move on now to our first rider for Germany. And it is the rider that is top of the Western European League standings at the moment. It's Frederick von Dres. He's 34 years old and ranked 18th in the world. And he is riding Bluetooth OLD, an 11-year-old Odenberg Gelding by Bordeaux. A new partnership and they made their debut in Mannheim CDI four star in April this year. They took two wins in August in San Marin three star, 71.674 in the Grand Prix and 73.192 in the special. And in Arken, just a couple of months ago, they scored their personal bests of 72.587 for seventh in a very competitive Grand Prix and fourth in the freestyle. We saw them finish 12th in the short Grand Prix in Herning last month with 70.658 and 10th in the freestyle with 75.715. As I said, he's top of the standings at the moment with 44 points, having also had a win in San Marin with hot hit three and finishing third in Lyon with Duke of Britain OLD. Bluetooth was previously ridden by Ingrid Klimka in 2018. But into the arena now for Germany, Frederick von Dres for Germany and Bluetooth OLD. Bluetooth looking a little bit tense coming down the centre line, just creeping a little behind the vertical. Really lovely steps. Just like to see the nose out just a couple of inches. Just keeping the pole at the highest point, but really covering the ground. Lovely athleticism. Keeping nice and supple in the trot's half passes. The judges rewarding. Seven, seven point five, eight hasn't slipped under a seven at the moment. Lovely steps of rain back. Lovely and active in the passage work and keeping that activity nicely in the PF. Nice here in the frame. Very relaxed in the walk work. Tracking up nicely. Good clear rhythm in the walk. And lovely uphill transition into the canter. Frederick doing a very good job of keeping things calm. Bluetooth looking a little hotter than when I saw him in Herning. Frederick's experience, though, really shining through here. A 
Lovely two time changes. This horse really able to sit and take the weight down the hind leg. Lovely and straight on the center line there in the ones. Interesting, those ones. All of the judges rewarded 7.5, apart from the judge at C, which gave a 7. I wonder what that judge saw that the others didn't. Not a big difference, but you never know. Lovely transition back into the trot and look at that hind leg, really able to sit in the PF. Oh, just lost the fluency there in back into the passage. As they come into the final halt. There we have it for Frederick von Dres and the wonderful Bluetooth OLD. Very, very well ridden there by Frederick. Bluetooth just looking a little hotter than I've seen him before. It's a big atmosphere here in Madrid. Lots of people in the crowd and the crowd pretty close to the edge of the arena as well. The arena is very enclosed here. Lots and lots of atmosphere for the horses to deal with. And just his second World Cup. So he's going to be looking to just give this horse some experience in this kind of atmosphere. There we have it. 71.895 and into the lead. All of the judges agreeing that it's over 70%. 70 there from the judge at M up to 73.158 from the judge at H. So that is our new leader, Frederick von Dres and Bluetooth OLD. Let me know if you are taking part in the spectator judging. Make sure you download the app and play along. Would love to know how you're getting on. You can contact me on Facebook or on Instagram. It's Natasha Baker, but next into the arena, for Spain, it's Juan Matute Gamon, a 24-year-old. He is 70th in the ranking. He is riding Quantico, a 15-year-old Hanoverian gelding, by Fighting Fit. They're competing in their second World Cup qualifier here. They had super results in Lyon last month, finishing 9th in the Grand Prix with 71.842 and 8th in the freestyle with 76.420. Juan had a great start to his 2021 season with a fourth place in Al Shakab in Doha in the Grand Prix and a third in the freestyle with 76.4. In May last year, Juan suffered a brain bleed and was in a coma. He made a remarkable recovery and after just a couple of serious operations, he was back in the saddle after just three months. He is a real fighter and I have never seen Juan without a smile on his face. He is so well loved amongst all of the riders. His father, Juan Matute, represented Spain in dressage at the Olympics in 1988, 92 and 96 and is his hero and his trainer. Juan Matute, come on and Quantico into the arena now for Spain. Juan is already a medalist, having won individual gold at the 2015 Junior Europeans and bronze into the 2016 and 2017 Under-25 European Championships and made his senior championship debut at WEG in 2018. A 
A great start. Super halt at the beginning. Lovely and square, picking up some really high marks. I know Juan was so upset to have missed out on competing in Tokyo, but absolutely remarkable recovery after he was so, so poorly last year. It's great to see him doing so well. Really taking his time there in the halt before asking for the rain back, really making sure it's nice and established. Lovely frame here in the passage. It's losing a little activity in the PF. Good steps. Nice and relaxed into the walk, really taking that stretch nicely. Good over track. It really is such a short line to be able to get a really clear extended walk. Good in the collection and a lovely transition into canter. So these riders are required to do three half passes once they've gone down the center line, then six steps one way, six steps the next, then another six, and then a three to finish with. Lovely and uphill flying changes here. Great airtime, yeah, getting 7.5s from all of the judges, apart from the one at H who rewarded an 8. And you must make sure you tune in on Clip My Horse tomorrow because it is the freestyle and Juan is such a crowd pleaser. His music is fantastic. Lovely one time changes on the center line. Very close between him and Frederick for the top spot. Again, maintaining that lovely level of activity in the passage. Can he keep it here in the PF? Yeah, some nice steps. I just feel like I want to go, come on, um, which he has in the passage. It just falls a little flat in the PF. A fabulous job. Look at that square halt there for Juan Matute Gamon and the lovely Quantico. Fantastic job by Juan. This horse so relaxed in the arena. Juan really is such a fantastic showman. And the crowd love him.
such a home favourite, especially after everything that Juan and his family have been through over the last year. And at just 24 years old, such a promising star of the future. So here we go, 71.684 into second. So, so close between him and Frederick. 70.789 from the judge at H. 73.553 from the judge at M. Fantastic job there from Juan. So close between him and Frederick. Frederick on 71.895 and Juan on 71.684. Interestingly, actually, spectator judging had Juan on 73.070 and Frederick on 72.019. So the audience had Juan to win, well, to take the lead. We have two combinations left in this first half. And then we will have a short eight minute break before we have the final six competitors. Next in the arena though, again for Spain, and again it's another Juan, but this time Juan Antonio Jimez Cobo, and he is 62 years old, 93rd in the ranking, and he rides Eclid's MOR, a 12 year old, another Lusitano, Last time out for Juan was the European Championships in Hagen in September. And together they finished 36th in the Grand Prix with 69.410. In August, they had a fantastic result in the CDI three-star in Zandoven. They finished fifth in the Grand Prix with 70.109. They're scoring consistently around the 70% in both the Grand Prix and mid-70% in the freestyle. Juan is, is another regular competitor for the Spanish teams and helped win the team silver at the 2004 Olympic Games in Athens. They also finished 12th individually there. Also competed in the Sydney Olympics in the 2002 World Equestrian Games where they won team bronze and the 2005 European Championships where they also won team bronze. But into the arena, Juan Antonio Jimenez Cobo and Eclid M.O.R. Very striking stallion. Lost a bit of the connection at the beginning of the extended trot. Much better there towards the end. Again, lovely and uphill in the half passes. I'd say slightly more supple there to, in the left half pass than the right. And just not quite square in the halt. This horse comes into its own though, in the collected work. Great lift in the PF and the Passage. This is where we're seeing the 7.5s and the eights on the scoreboard.
again, lovely and relaxed in the arena, really able to show a good quality of walk. So they come into the half passes. So three strides and change, then six strides and change as they go down the center line. Nice and supple in the canter half passes. Lovely balance in the changes. Very straight in the two times. Keeping that uphill tendency and keeping that lift in the changes as well. And on to the ones. Super, getting seven and a half and eights there from the judges for those changes. And again, lovely work in the pirouettes. Could have been a little braver, I feel, there in the extended canter. Could have shown just a little clearer difference, I think. Just been a bit braver. Lovely here in the passage. Definitely this horse's party piece. It looks like he could just stay in passage all day long. And again, really smooth transitions into the PF. And back into the passage again. Fabulous job from Juan Antonio Jimenez Cobo and the lovely Eclides Moore. They are representing Spain. So we've seen a lot of Spanish riders here in this first half of the short Grand Prix. Just one Spanish rider to go in the second half, and that is Beatriz Ferrasalat. Lovely job there from Juan. And he is rewarded 68.579 into third place. Very consistent judges there with 69.605 from M down to 67.5 from the judge at E. The audience loved it. 70.659 there from the spectator judging. So just one rider left to go now before the break. And it is a rider for Portugal. Two riders coming forward for Portugal today. So we just ne wait now for the final rider of this first half of short Grand Prix to come forward. It is actually the youngest rider in the field at just 21 years old. We had a lot of young riders actually in their 20s in this class. It's great to see so many talented young riders coming forward for the World Cup. But this is Martim Meneres. And he rides Ecuador, a combination that is definitely on the rise. Martin and Ecuador made their senior championship debut this year at the European Championships in Hagen. 
Finishing 32nd in the Grand Prix was 69.581, narrowly missing out on the magical 70%. Last time out, however, they finished third in the three-star Grand Prix and Grand Prix Special with 68.848 and 70.021 just last month in Alta de Chao. Martin and Ecuador have contested five youth champ European championships from 2015 right the way through to 2019, where they gained their best result, finishing 10th in the Young Riders team competition, 12th in the individual and 8th in the freestyle, all with plus 70% scores in 2019. So the bell has gone. And we welcome the third Lusitano into the arena, this time with Martim Meneres and Ecuador for Portugal. Lovely steps in the can in the trot extension there, covering the ground nicely and tracking up. Really, really lovely, harmonious picture these two are creating. Good crossing in the half pass. Lovely there in the half pass right. Again, could have just stayed a little more established in the halt before asking for the rein back. On the test sheet, it does say halt immobility, rein back five steps. And you really want to see that immobilization in the halt lovely and balanced in the PF and the passage keeping a good rhythm especially there in that last section of passage Wonderful in the walk, really lovely and relaxed. Good clear rhythm in the walk as well. Nice four time beat. Clearly tracking up. as they come into the counter half passes. Very smooth. Yeah, nice, consistent, correct two time changes there. That looked lovely and straight from this angle again. Very, very correct in the changes. 
scored an eight there from the judge at C. And again, really good marks for both pirouettes as well. Again, just could have been a little braver there, I feel, in the extended canter. Was a little modest, getting 6.5s and 7s from the judges. Martin doing a really, really fabulous job. His first World Cup qualifier of the Western European League, just 21 years old and able to ride such a well-produced, polished test, beautifully accurate. What a star for the future he is for Portugal. Just a little unbalanced there into the final halt, but a fabulous test from Martin Menrez and Ecuador. Lovely 12-year-old Lusitano. Their PB is 72.513. I'm not sure they're going to break into the 70s today, but very, very excited to see this combination tomorrow in the freestyle. Some really, really strong points there. I think the flying changes there were definitely a highlight. Just losing the signal there, unfortunately. I'm very sorry about that. But um, but as I was saying, really fantastic scores there in the two-time changes, picking up lots and lots of sevens, even an eight there as well, a couple of eights. And we're back, 68.053 and into fourth. A couple of 69s there from the judge at E and from the judge at C, down to 66%. So there we have it for the first half of this short Grand Prix. We're just going to take a short break now for eight minutes, but we will be back at 4.26 local time, 3.26 British time. But here are the standings so far. Frederick von Dres and Bluetooth OLD for Germany in the lead, 71.895. That's the score to beat. Juan Matutigamon and Quantico, 71.684. Very, very close behind. Juan Jimenez Cobo in third, 68.579. Incredibly close between him and Martin Menares and Ecuador, who we just saw there, 68.053. Then we had the fantastic Claudio Castillo Ruiz and Ebeno in fifth, 67.342. And Alejandro Asino Mendez in sixth for Spain, 64.947. So join us back in just a few minutes for the second half of this short Grand Prix.
Welcome back to this second half of the short Grand Prix for the FEI World Cup here in Madrid. Here you can see the second half, the riders coming forward. We have two riders for the Netherlands, Denise Neckman and Timar Vestra. We also have the lovely Rodrigo Torres from Portugal coming in second. Beatrice Ferrasalat coming in third. Helen Lanahanneberg second from last. And Morgan Barbasson for France, last rider into the arena with her lovely Sir Donahall OLD. But first into the arena, it is a rider for the Netherlands. Denise Nickman, the 27 year old, ranking 71st in the world. She is riding Boston STH. A 15 year old KWPN stallion by Johnson Tien and out of a Quattro Mare. They are re representing the Netherlands and together they've had a great season picking up their freestyle personal best of 79.405 for fifth place at the Arken CDI Five Star Nations Cup. Last time out, though, was in Lyon, where they finished 11th in the Grand Prix with 71.079 and 12th in the freestyle with 74.01. So into the arena, Denise Nickman and Boston STH for the Netherlands. Well, that has to be the speediest halt entry I think I've ever seen. Obviously, the horse very unsettled in the halt. But a very, very striking stallion. I don't think he could be any more uphill if he tried. Wonderful ground cover in the extension hard to see from this angle whether he's tracking up there but incredibly expressive in the foreleg yeah that halt scoring 5.5 just sets her on a really really uphill battle to get those scores up just scored a two from one of the judges for that first halt Lovely steps in the half pass. So you could just see in the change over there at E, the change of bent, just dropped the pole slightly. It's going to be interesting to see how she rides this halt rein back. Yeah, nice. I wonder why she didn't ride a halt on the first centre line because she got a good immobility there at C. It wasn't square, but the horse managed to halt still. Just losing some of the activity in the PF. Really lovely steps here in the half pass. Just want to see a more consistent contact. Just at times, the horse just drops behind the vertical just ever so slightly. And I'm really, really nitpicking now. But uh, for those high marks that she's going to want to, to be getting to contend for a top placing, it's all about keeping that frame up, keeping the pole at the highest point. Some lovely walk steps. Really super transition into canter. Again, this horse lovely and supple. As they come into their two time changes. Oh, just a bit close behind there on that last one.
very on the spot. I think if I was her, I would have just ridden it a little bigger and kept that activity behind on the pirouette. It was incredibly small. What's this one going to be like? Yeah, nice. I preferred that one. So let's see what the judges think. Okay. Half preferred the first one, half preferred the second one. So uh, who knows? Good steps in the collector canter, a little braver than the ones that we saw just before the break. This horse has such a lovely, lovely expression. Incredibly uphill, must feel really super to ride. Cleverly ridden there in the PF, traveling slightly forward, but that enabled her to just keep the activity and the steps flowing in the PF. And they come into their final halt, a lovely test for the Netherlands of Denise Nickman and Boston STH. What a fabulous, fabulous horse. They create such a lovely picture. In July 2019, they went to the under-25 European Championships and they picked up a silver in the Grand Prix with 73.872. Fantastic result there for her. Not sure she's going to break into the 70% today, but it really means that it's all to play for tomorrow in the freestyle. Just waiting for one judge to finalize their score. So you can see the next horse and rider combination have come into the arena. Just while we wait for Denise's score. The next rider is one for Portugal, and it's a combination we fell in love with in Tokyo. But here we go, 68.527 into fourth place there for Denise Nickman. Scores there between 67 and 69%. Again, very consistent from the judges around the arena there. But we move on to this combination now. As I said, it's a combination that we all fell in love with at the Tokyo Olympic Games. Rodrigo Torres and Fogoso Horse Champline, an 11-year-old Lusitano. They helped Portugal into eighth place in the team event and were highest placed Portuguese rider, finishing 17th in the Grand Prix with 72.642. 17th in the special was 74.726. And they finished on a high of 78.943, their personal best in the freestyle for 16th place in the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. They really captured the hearts of the judges and spectators watching from home and showed what fabulous dressage horses Lusitanos can be at this level. Since Tokyo, they competed last month in Alta do Cheo, sorry if I got that wrong, with a double win in the Grand Prix and the special. So into the arena now, we have the wonderful Rodrigo Torres and Fogoso Horse Champ line. Now that's a very square halt. Great way to start. Incredibly balanced coming down the center line. The harmony between this pair is just so beautiful to watch. Lovely steps in the trot extension. They just make it so, look so effortless and easy. We always say that you want dressage to look like poetry and motion. And I think that's something that these two really, really encapsulate. So 
super crossing, lovely and supple. Great immobility again in the holds and nice and straight in the rain back. Difficult to see the steps at this angle, but we can definitely evaluate the straightness and that's something that he achieved very well. Great activity in the passage and the PF and lovely fluent transitions as well. They're going to be picking up some good marks. Seven, seven point fives and eights from all of the judges there for that PF and passage tour. And then into ultimate relaxation in the walk. Great rhythm. difficult to ride from ultimate collection of the PF and Passage and then letting the horse really stretch out in the walk and then pick up again and straight away going into this canter half pass. Again, really showing off how supple this horse is here in the canter half pass. <laughs> and into the two time changes. Again, lovely and correct, really uphill. Again, another horse and rider combination where the frame just doesn't change, maintains beautifully, no matter what they're doing, that connection remains. Wonderfully consistently sitting around the seven, 7.5. Just lost a little bit of the balance coming out of the canter pirouette there. I'm sorry if you can hear my dog in the background. That's the joys of working from home. Thanks, COVID. <laughs> but coming down their final centre line, wonderful activity in the passage. Beautifully straight on the centre line and effortlessly into the PF. Nice and on the spot there. Again, the rhythm not changing. Fabulous job. So beautifully ridden by Rodrigo Torres and Fogoso Horse Champ Line for Portugal. What a gorgeous combination still at the top of their game after such a wonderful year real fairy tale year for this combination doing so so well out in tokyo every rider aims to peak at the championships of that year and that is certainly what they did earlier this summer and to come back and to be able to put on such a wonderful performance They've done such a wonderful, wonderful job for the world of Lusitanos and really showed what is possible. 
So just wait for their score now. But into the arena next, it's the last rider for Spain, Beatriz Ferrisalat, a 55-year-old rider who is ranked 30th in the world. And she is riding the gelding elegance, 12-year-old. And here we have it into third place, 70.737. All the ride, all the judges apart from the judge at H over 70%, 69.211 up to 72.105 there from the judge at B into third place. But what can this lady do? Another partnership that competed in the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games, but she also did the European Championships. Just a couple of months ago, they finished 18th in the Grand Prix, 16th in the Special and 17th in the Freestyle in Tokyo, all with scores over 72%. In Hagen, they scored 73.898 in the Grand Prix to finish 17th and 71.748 in the Special to finish in the top 20. Just last month, the pair competed in Lyon for the second leg of the World Cup qualifiers. They had great results with two fifth places, 75.026 in the short Grand Prix and their personal best of 80.85 in the freestyle. And she sits 26th in the standings alongside Helen Lana Hannenberg with 13 points. Beatrice is a regular for the Spanish team and made her debut in Atlanta 1996. She won the team silver and individual bronze at the 2004 Olympic Games in Athens and then finished 10th individually in Rio 2016. Can just see elegance going around the arena there looking rather hot. I said earlier the atmosphere here is quite electric and he's obviously feeling that today. These horses have been cooped up in competitions with no atmosphere and no audience for such a long time because of the global pandemic. It's so nice that we are now welcoming spectators back into dressage. But into the arena is Beatriz Ferrer Salat and Elegance for Spain. You can just see there again the tension creeping in in that first halt. This horse has such a wonderful hind leg. If he can keep his cool. Again, just showing a bit of tension in the extended trot there. Just a little hollow over the back. You can just see the, the back not really lifting there. You just want to see him taking a breath and relaxing into the atmosphere. Hopefully as the test goes on, she will be able to use her experience and really, really get him to breathe in the arena. It's quite an ordeal for the horses. It's so different competing in somewhere like the Tokyo Olympics where there was no spectators, but it was outside in a big stadium. And then going into Hagen for the European Championships, again, outside, there were spectators there. But then coming into these indoor shows with such a huge electric atmosphere, that atmosphere has no, ooh, well ridden there from Beatrice showing her experience but as i was saying in these really really tense atmospheres of these indoor shows and a lot of the riders use these as really really great warm-ups for the outside international shows in the summer if they can deal with these hot atmospheres of the indoor world cup shows they can definitely deal with the outdoor stadiums and of course we have the world games in Denmark in Herning in August next year. So these riders are going to have their eyes firmly set on this, but elegance continuing to show a lot of tension in the arena today. Beatrice doing such a fantastic job of trying to keep his cool, still sitting on around 66%.
again, not a direct transition there into canter, just the tension creeping in in every single movement that she does, which is just bringing her overall score down, which is such a pity. We can see how much talent this horse has, what a wonderful hind leg he has, how uphill he is in his frame. And he could, if he could just take a breath and relax into it, could be a really, really super horse and a super test. Nice two time changes. Yeah, really, really well ridden there. Picking up some eights and 7.5s for that. It's almost as if when he's got lots to think about, he's not thinking about what's going on around him and really concentrating on the movement in hand. Let's see, can he keep his cool through these one time changes? Yeah. Nicely ridden. Again, she's doing a, a good job because he's just wanting to tuck behind the bit and really spit the bit out and come back at her. She's doing a good job of trying to ride him up from the hind leg into the contact. It can be just so difficult when you don't feel like you've got enough in your hand. I feel like in the canter here, she's done a really good job. She's just come back into, into the trot too late. Yeah, the bells, the bells rung there. So she's going to probably lose a couple of marks. She was meant to do the transition there at F. So she's gonna lose a couple of marks for an error of course, which is such a pity. Like I said, it's the first time this short Grand Prix has been used in the World Cup. So it's very different for the riders to try and get used to a different test. This is better. It's looking more relaxed now. Taking the contact, you can see is nicely on the vertical pole is up as they come into their final halt. Beatrice Ferrisalat and the lovely elegance, the very hot elegance today. Just such a shame that that level of tension really got in the way for them today, scoring the, the really top marks. Hopefully today she can give him that confidence that he needs to be able to, to go away, think about it, and then come back into the same arena tomorrow for the freestyle and be much more relaxed. Interesting when we think about the freestyle though and how different horses react to that, um, you know, whether the music lights them up. Here we go, 66.395 into eighth place there. Very, very interesting marks from the judges e 62.605 h 70.5 and the rest around the 66 65 that's going to be a very interesting one for the judges to to chat about tonight and to see what they've all got to say because that's a very very big discrepancy in marks but as i was saying interesting to see how the horses react to coming into the freestyle does the music light them up even more or does it actually distract them from the atmosphere from the audience around the arena that's going to be really interesting to see how elegance comes out tomorrow but into the arena now we move on to Tamar Vestra and she is riding for the Netherlands she is riding the lovely stallion, Hexagon's Double Dutch, the 13-year-old KWBM by Johnson. This combination have had a very busy year. In Arkham CDI Four Star in September, they were 12th in the Grand Prix with 71.348 and 6th in the Freestyle with 77.310. 
since they have gone on to compete in both Herning and Lyon World Cup qualifier. They were 11th in the Grand Prix and 13th in the Freestyle with 71.053 and 73.130 respectively in Herning. And in Lyon, they finished 7th in both classes with 72.474 in the Short Grand Prix and their personal best of 78.785 in the Freestyle. Tamar is third in the standings alongside Nanoscore Bogmerald with 32 points. So into the arena for the Netherlands, Tamar Vestra and Hexagon's double Dutch. Super halt there to start. Again, this is a horse that can be quite affected by the atmosphere. So interesting that this is the third Western European League World Cup qualifier and she's contested all three. Maybe she's just trying to get him used to this kind of atmosphere. She is a regular on the World Cup stage. He's looking a lot more relaxed than what I've seen him in the past, which is fantastic. Tamar absolutely able to really ride him. Can still see a little bit of tension in the mouth, but actually it's not letting it take control of, of everything. He's keeping a nice consistent contact, a nice consistent connection. This horse is very, very expressive and you could see there the amount of crossing in the half passes. Looked like a nice square hole, it's a little wide behind from this angle, but maintained the straightness nicely. A little abrupt into the PF transition. Again, we'd just like to see a, a bit more activity in the PF. Again, I feel myself going, you know, come on, hexagons, double dutch. Good relaxation in the walk, lovely stretch. Nicely over tracking in the extended walk. Lost a bit of the connection coming into the collected walk, but regained nicely. Bit of an anticipation there into the counter transition. Tema always does very, very well in her canter tour. Sorry, we've just lost the live stream a second and we're back. Thank you for bearing with us today. We've just had a few technical difficulties with our stream. You can probably hear the sound has been a little difficult from the main arena, but I really hope you're bearing with us and enjoying our coverage today. into the two time changes, lovely and uphill, very expressive. Again, this horse has such a great ability to really collect and sit on its hind leg, really take that weight. And then show those expressive one times off down the center line picking up some really good marks here in the counter tour. As I said, this is always their strongest pace where they pick up the most points. And there you go, she's really going for that extended canter, really showing a good clear difference between the working or collected canter and the extension. Just the rhythm being affected there in the passage. You could see a few strides 
just weren't quite so consistent in the passage. Better activity that time I felt in the PF. As they come into their final halt. Lovely square one it is as well for Tamar Vestra and Hexagon's Double Dutch for the Netherlands. Very, very good job. Very well ridden there. Tamar trains and competes horses at Stahl Hexagon in the Netherlands. She's also a coach and deals with all of the horse sales at the stables as well. She's got such a great partnership with this lovely stallion. They really love competing at these indoor World Cup competitions. And here we have it, 70.131 into fourth place. Scores up to 71.447 there for the judge at C at H68.289 there. Nice and consistent from the judges. So just two more horse and rider combinations coming forward. I don't know about you, but this short Grand Prix, it just seems to go so, so quickly. But next into the arena, it is our second and final rider for Germany. The lovely Helen Lanhannenberg, 39-year-old, ranked number 27th in the world. And she is riding Annabelle 110, the 13-year-old Holstein mare. This partnership had their first championship call up this year when they competed at the European Championships in Hagen. They helped Germany bring home the team gold medal, scored 73.960 in the Grand Prix for 16th place, 11th in the special with 75.228 and 14th in the freestyle with 77.214. The pair competed at the World Cup qualifier in Herning last month, picking up two fourth places, just missing out on a podium finish. They scored 74.921 in the short Grand Prix, which was their personal best, and 81.215 in the freestyle. And they currently sit 26th in the standings alongside Beatrice with 13 points. So into the arena now, Helen Lana Hanneberg, and Annabelle 110 for Germany. This year, Helen actually retired her former top horse, Damsey FRH, with whom she enjoyed enormous success with as part of the German team, winning team gold at the Europeans in 2017, as well as being third in the World Cup finals in 2019. She was also no stranger to the podium with the sensational Damon Hill NRW picking up Team Silver at the London 2012 Olympics as well as individual medals at the 2014 World Championships and 2013 Europeans. But now she competes this lovely, elegant, leggy mare, Annabelle 110. Quite a contrast to Damsey who was quite small and compact and just a, a, a bigger type of, of horse, whereas this one's much more elegant and, and leggy. Really, really covers the ground. They make such a lovely partnership. And it's been wonderful to see Helen on so many horses at this level. Just a true testament to her riding ability. Super half passes, really lovely and supple. Just leaving the left hind there in the halt. I think also maybe she did six steps there in the rain back. Not sure if maybe that was one too many. You could just see her saying, no, 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 come on. Forward you go. Nicely on the spot in the PF. Good fluent transition there back into the passage. Again, a lovely open frame 
in this mare, really keeping that pole up and out. Beautiful relaxation in the extended walk. Oh, just not quite connected there in the in the transition into the canter. You can see she had some trot steps in between. You want to see a nice direct transition into the canter. Get picking up some fours. One judge giving seven point five. I'm not quite sure what they were looking at. I would have said four or five is probably more correct. This horse has lovely tempi changes, beautifully uphill, lovely air time, using the whole diagonal, really, really well placed. Again, it's such an experienced rider that's really able to put that into practice with all of her horses, really wonderful canter pirouette there. Super one-time changes. Oh, just broke in the... Oh, what a shame. Yeah, just lost the rhythm there. Came back into trot on the canter pirouette. That's a real shame. That's just going to pull her score down a little. She's Yeah, see, she was in the lead and now into third. And those top riders... I think Frederick Vondres and Juan Matutigamon are, are in the lead at the moment and she's pulled herself back into second, but it's so tight at the top. You really, really can't afford to have many errors. Lovely and on the spot in the PF, just dropping the pole slightly there. She's just struggling to get the mare to, to go forward back into the passage. You can really see her pushing and the mare just quite happily staying in a forward piaf. Again, that's going to be another costly mistake. Fives there for the transitions. A couple of sixes. The actual PF was was pretty smart, and then it, she just lost it in that transition. Annabelle was quite happy staying in the PF. A very very good job there by Helen Lan Hannenberg and Annabelle one one zero for Germany. Has she done enough to take the lead? I think she may have done before that last error, and I'm not sure that's going to be quite enough now to take her into the lead. It's definitely going to be in the top three, but where is it going to put her? Just a couple of really, really expensive mistakes in there today, which is quite uncharacteristic. Yeah, into third, 71395 so at the moment, we have Frederick von Drez in the lead, 71.895. So incredibly close between Frederick Juan Matutigamon, who is on 71.684, and Helen Anna Hanneberg. But what can this next lady do? It's our final horse and rider combination for this short Grand Prix. It's our sole representative for France, it is the wonderful Morgan Barbiton and Sir Don Hall II OLD. 15-year-old Oldenburg Stallion by Sandro Hitt out of a Don Hall mare. He is known as Gus to his friends. Morgan has already achieved so much, having been to London 2012 Olympic Games, World Championships and many Europeans as both senior and young rider. 
This year, Morgan and Gus finished 24th in the Grand Prix at the Tokyo Olympic Games with 70.543. They then headed to Hagen for the European Championships, coming 25th in the Grand Prix, scoring 71.941, and 23rd in the special with 71.109. They then went on to take the win with 76.385 in the Budapest World Cup qualifier last month, picking up valuable points for the overall standings. In Lyon, they were 8th in the short Grand Prix with 72.079. So actually, that's what they have to do again today to take the win here. So can they do it? Morgan Barbasson and Sir Don Hall the second OLD. Unfortunately, not quite square into that first halt. Again, this is such a beautiful stallion. Really, really covers the ground in the arena. You'll see his standout points are definitely his half passes, where he really, really covers the ground. He has the most enormous reach. These two are such a formidable partnership. Can't quite see the crossing so well from this angle, but uh, trust me, it's huge. If she can carry on like this, she will go into the lead. So much better halt this time. So one, two, three, four, five. Good. And straight back into the trot, into the passage. It's been so wonderful following this combination's journey from a few years ago in the World Cup. He has struggled in the past with the PF, but it's got so much stronger in the last couple of years. Gus is actually really lucky to be here. He had an awful stable accident a few years ago in Falsterbro, where he ended up having to be sawn out of his stable and had significant leg injuries. He was operated on and Morgan was told that he would never be a competitive horse again and would certainly never make it to Grand Prix. She nursed him back to health and spent a long time in rehab. Got a lot of love and attention from Morgan and they have really achieved the impossible. Morgan loves this horse so much. They really have such a special partnership and she says that she is blessed to have such a fighter under the saddle and that it's a true testament of love not only for the sport but for our beloved horses just losing a bit of the forwardness there in the changes he has such a huge stride and is so uphill in his changes. Better here in the two times. Just needs to keep that forward momentum. And into the ones on the center line. It's so hard when these horses have such a big stride and you want to control the stride. You want to curb so much enthusiasm that this horse really, really has. It has such a big stride and, and really collecting that for these changes and for these canter pirouettes can be such a challenge. That's when you can see what a big canter this horse has. Oh. A bit of uh, enthusiasm there at the end of the uh, canter extension. A 
lovely steps here in the passage. Again, just lost a bit of activity in the transition. We gained it well again into the passage as they come into their final halt. There we have it for Morgan Barbasson and the lovely Sir Donahall the second OLD for France. It's going to be tight again, isn't it? Another rider that's looking like she's going to be in the 71s. What's going to happen? Is she going to do enough to get into the top three? Incredibly tight here at the top of the leaderboard. Four riders on 71. Yep, 71.105 into fourth place. Very consistent amongst the judges, 271s, 270s, and a 72 there from the judge at B. But that puts Morgan into fourth place. So we have Germany, our winners for today, Frederick von Drez and 71.895, riding the wonderful Bluetooth OLD. In second, Juan Matuta Gamon and Quantico, 71.684. And here we see, can see the whole standings. Four riders on 71%. Helen Lana Hanneberg and Annabelle 110 for Germany. Few mistakes in their test today. 71.395. Morgan Barbasson, 71.105. Rodrigo Torres for Portugal, 70.737. Tamar Vestra for the Netherlands, 70.131. Juan Jimenez Cobo. For Spain, 68.579. Denise Nickman, 8th. For the Netherlands, 68.527. There, Ecuador, 9th. For Portugal, 68.053. It's incredibly, incredibly tight on this leaderboard. Look at the top there, the top six riders, all within a percent and a half of each other. That makes it so, so exciting for the freestyle tomorrow. So we can just see the arena being changed now, ready for the prize giving. We will see the top eight riders come forward the top three will receive their prizes and all 12 combinations will go forward to the freestyle tomorrow. So tomorrow, make sure you join us back on Clip My Horse. We will be having the same 12 partnerships coming forward for the FEI Dressage World Cup Dressage Freestyle Final. Who is going to pick up those valuable 20 points to go forward to the World Cup Finals? So make sure you join us on Clip My Horse. It's four o'clock local time, three o'clock UK time. The first horse and rider combination come into the arena. So you can sit back and enjoy the prize giving, but make sure you join us tomorrow. Four o'clock local time, three o'clock British time for the Grand Prix freestyle. But that's it for tonight from me, Natasha Baker. I hope you've enjoyed watching along with us. But just a quick reminder, our winner for the night is Frederick Vondrez and Bluetooth Old 71.895. Second place, Juan Matutikamon and Quantico in second, 